It should be a song. Cooperation. Praise God. All things are happening. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're blessed to be alive at this time. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Hallelujah. We are not only in a new season, but we are in a new era. There's a new release of the anointing. There's a new fresh fragrance from the throne of God. There's a new reconnecting to where God is causing his people to become more hungry and thirsty for righteousness. In Psalm 149, let's speak it together. It says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. And his praise in the assembly in this, of the saints. Are you in the assembly of the saints? Amen. Yes. Let true ministries rejoice in their maker. Amen. Let the children of Zion be joyful to their king. Let them praise his name with a what? Dance. Just in case some of you don't like to shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> it says, let them praise his name with a what? A dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people when they praise him. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Why? Because it takes humility to praise. Pride doesn't. They're more concerned of what people will think. Let the saints be joyful in glory. It's in the glory realm. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Well, you're out of bed now. <laughs> Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. They must go together. This is how the anointing comes. To do what? To execute vengeance on the what? Amen. Amen. Verse 6 again. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Does everybody get it? It says high praises. Not low praise. Not medium praise. Not mild praise. High praise. To execute. Because with, without high praise, the sword is not activated. To execute vengeance on the nations, which is associated with the ungodly, and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the what? Written, Written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. Who's God going to use to execute judgment? The saints. I think some people have a hard time with that. And he's, how's, how, he, look at, there's something powerful here. He says, they're going to execute judgment, but he calls them before. You will bind their kings. Why? Because there's the two keys of the kingdom given by the anointing to bind and loose. There must be high praises for the sword to be activated. So we are constantly activating the things of God. It's our responsibility to turn it on. That's why the word says, stir yourself up. What are you doing? You're activating. Amen? And you don't stir yourself up, you don't activate nothing. Nothing's activated. There's no red light there. The enemy's going to run you right over. 
Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. That's why the Bible says forsake not to assemble. Because there's a special anointing. In verse 6, 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Let's speak it. Therefore do what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober. That means alert. Be sensitive. Be vigilant, which means consistent. If you're not consistent, can you be alert? No. You know, one of the things the Lord looks at, he's not looking for us to be perfect. He's looking for us to be consistent. Amen. Why? Because an individual that is consistent is more trustworthy than a person that's more perfect. Amen. Does everybody get it? So we're to be sober. We're to be alert. Awaken. We're to be vigilant, be consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means your battle's against his voice. And if you are not alert by being consistent, the voice of the stranger will take you out. It says it's a roaring voice. In other words, it's persuasive. Very persuasive, very, very persistent. If you've ever noticed when you've done something in some way or another, you made a wrong decision, you bought the wrong, whatever it is, man, that voice comes and wants to just pursue you and per persuade you to, and just keeps coming and coming and coming until it gets what it wants. Unless you take authority. It says that that voice comes as a roaring lion to seek whom he may devour, overtake. It says that we're to resist him steadfast in the faith, that is your connection, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you're not the only one going through it. And may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. He says, you're going to go through it. But its purpose is to get you a place where you are perfectly settled. Not that you are perfect, but you are settled. You are ground in. You're not moving. You're immovable. Is everybody okay? Now, the only way to do this is with the anointing of God. You cannot do this in your own strength. You will try and you will fail. Everything is associated with the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And what's happening right now is we're constantly stepping into our destiny. And you're going to hear more about destiny for a while. I don't know how long. But God is trying to get his people and cause them to step into the destiny that he's predestined for them. But if you are not consistent, it's impossible. And only the anointing will bring you into that place. What's he trying to do? He's trying to get us to the place where we are walking in what we call the warrior anointing and execute judgment. Does everybody get this? We are supposed to be flames of fire, ministering flames of fire. That means you have the authority to call down fire. Do you know when you speak, fire should be coming out of your mouth against the enemy, just like the two prophets that will come, Moses and Elijah. One called fire down from heaven. The other one turned water into whatever, uh, blood and so forth and plagues and but at that time, they will speak and fire will per, uh, consume their enemies. Same as Jesus. When he shows up, when he speaks, fire is going to consume his enemies. 
Fire consumes your enemies. When any, listen, anything that's not backed by the anointing is called flesh. That's why he said, and everything will be judged by fire. And if it stands, it's backed by the anointing. If it doesn't stand, it was little flesh. And it won't be accounted for nothing. So if God hasn't told you to do it, then it's flesh. Is everybody okay? So there's a warrior anointing that is here being released right now. In fact, we talked about Friday night. God was released a warrior anointing. And it's for his people to become executors. We are to execute the judgments, the written judgments of God. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with what you believe. It's what to do with what's written. Amen? That's why when Jesus was executing judgment, even with the serpent, he said it's written. That's why the devil couldn't get to him. Jesus played with him. He let him think he was okay. And then he showed up one day and said, hand over the keys. You lost. <laughs> And you're out on bail now. <laughs> but you're going to get locked up soon. Amen? For a thousand, he's getting sentenced to a thousand years. Then he's going to get consumed. <laughs> Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Because everybody's always, people are always running to people to ask something instead of God. They go to the phone instead of the throne, right? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the anointed one, the eternal presence, power of God Almighty. You stepped into this realm. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, in other words, a natural, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say that you are Peter, you are a rock, you are the stone. And on this rock, now, first of all, he calls Peter a rock, because that's a word Peter means rock. And then he says, on this rock, now he turns to foundation. Is everybody with me? So he's using Peter, but Peter was not the Pope, amen? amen. Sheesh. See how the enemy twists the word of God without the Holy Spirit? Amen. There was no such thing as a pope in the Bible. Amen? Amen. There's no popies. There's poporia, but that's about it. Okay. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, meaning rock, and on this rock, meaning foundation, I'm going to build my body my church. Jesus was the anointed one and his anointing. Jesus was the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty in the physical realm. And he says, I'm going to build my body. I'm going to leave my body here. I'm going to build my body. When I go home, I'm going to be the head of this body. But I'm going to build my body on the foundation of my presence, of my truth, and of my power. That's how I'm going to build my body. Is everybody okay? And, verse nine, and, and, and then he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, the, the powers of darkness cannot penetrate it. And then he says this, are you ready? I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to give you keys that will be backed by the anointing. And whatever you bind on the physical realm, what comes out of your mouth here, 
will penetrate into the unseen realm. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in what? Heaven. And whatever you speak in this realm, when the anointing, when you are backed by the anointing, whatever you speak here will be manifested in that realm. Whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loosed. Amen? Amen. And in this, it's powerful. Again, Peter was, Jesus called him the rock. And the rock was a representation of the foundation. Peter got connected to the, founda uh, the founder of the foundation, the father. <laughs> which holds all eternal calling, purpose, and destiny in his presence, his power, and his truth, called the anointing. In hope to establish a warrior foundation with the warrior anointing, which is attached to the authority of weapons. These are authority weapons. Everyone say authority weapons. They're authority weapons of God that lock and unlock. They're in spiritual places Things and beings, <laughs> spiritual things, spiritual places, and spiritual beings. Somebody got it. You have the authority to bind them and to loose people. It's a third dimensional anointing. In other words, a third chamber. It's one who stands before the king. You have the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. The most holy place is one who stands before the king. That's why David always said, I set the Lord before me. He set the king before him because David walked in not only a kingly anointing, but a warrior anointing. And that's what's happening right now globally. The prophetic release of the anointing, it's a warrior anointing that's coming upon the children of God to turn them from just citizens to soldiers and then from soldiers to warriors. And 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 2. Listen, we are in critical times and there is great battles going on. Oh, happy days. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, which means plan, that is in the anointing. Hello? Does everybody get that? Do you see this? Come on, we've got to look beyond the words into the spirit. Here it says... You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, which means plan, that is in Christ Jesus, which means in the anointing. How many know the plan of God is in the anointing? That's where it's at. That's where everything is at. It's in the anointing. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Wow. So be strong in his plan, in the anointing, Train up or disciple soldiers to become warriors. That's what he's telling them. You, therefore, must endure. How many of y'all know endurance is also known as patience? You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. In other words, we are to avoid worldly appetites of greed, love of money, pride, the pursuit of fame, selfish ambitions, all of these things that so ensnare individuals and mislead them from the destiny that Christ has prepared. And he also says in verse 5, and if also if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? The rules. These are ba battling according to the rules of righteousness. We're not cheaters. 
And if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Those are rules of righteousness. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Again, we're battling to the rules of righteousness, maintaining a level of death to self. We are positioned to endure all things and temptations. Under the anointing as a warrior anointing, you cannot be defeated. It's impossible. Verse 8, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer troubles and evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we what? If we died with him. Again, it's, you're going to always see that it's a matter of level of your death is a metal level of anointing. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Let me repeat that again. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithful, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Wow. Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> warrior anointing remember the anointing is caught it takes a position to where we have to get to <clears throat> Matthew seven twenty four. Is everybody there? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him a wise man who built his house on the, which means what? The anointing or the foundation. The anointing, the foundational anointing. Does everybody get it? And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not what? You cannot fall under any other anointing. If you maintain that anointing, you cannot fall. For it was founded on the rock or on the anointing. So God is trying to get his children to build their foundation on the anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth. Not some religious act. Not on works. Works do not build the foundation. No works build foundation. Amen? In fact, without the anointing, you're going to mess up the plan anyways. You end up building a hut instead of a three-story home. You'll be living in your shed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woohoo! But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, how many of you all know when Jesus says something, it's anointed? <laughs> but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them is an idiot. He will be like a what? A foolish man who built his house on sand. Does everybody get this? Come on, how many believers, I don't want to say this. I don't know. Anyways, you know a lot of people that <laughs> have built their house on sand and not rock, not on the anointing. Amen? Or what the enemy tries to do is get you to alter the building. Amen. You'll start building on the anointing, and next thing you know, you're building on sand. And what happens then? And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. In other words, it collapsed. Nobody get it? Sand is associated with building on the ways of the world. Pride is the number one thing that builds on sand. Hallelujah. Now, 
And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having what? Authority. Didn't we just talk about? He said, find faithful individuals that will be able to what? Teach. Teach what? Teach under the anointing. Why? Because it gives you authority. So he says that, well, they were blown away because he taught, us, taught them as one having authority, not as a scribe, because they've been her, her, hearing from the scribes for so long, but it wasn't backed by the anointing. That's why the word says the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. Building your foundation on the anointing, not on works, but on the eternal presence, power, and truth. Works is sand anointing. <laughs> the anointing of Christ is solid in authority, rightly using the weapons. In Hebrews 2. Hebrew. Hallelujah. So to build a foundation, you must be consistent. Amen? Consistency is a key. The area of, you know, when you go, join in the military, the first thing they do is they put you in boot camp. And when you're in boot camp, everything in boot camp seems to come against everything that you believe. <laughs> Every desire in your heart, it comes against it. What do they want to do in boot camp? They want to empty you. They want to reprogram you. They want you to move out of how you feel. Because if you're out in a war, in a battle zone, and there's a bunch of you out there, and there's 10 of you out there, nine of them are afraid, that's not a very good thing. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't be afraid. It means if you're going to allow it to move you. It doesn't mean that you won't be attacked with emotion. It determines whether it moves you or not. Amen? Amen. See, the anointing knows the emotion realm. It separates the emotion realm. The anointing separates the soul, the flesh, and the spirit. A warrior anointing works out of the spirit, nothing else. Nothing. There's a difference. You know that he's the head, and you're headless. That is the warrior anointing. Everything is dependent on him. You are nothing without him, and you can do nothing without him. You have no strength without him, and you can't see without that anointing. Because the anointing, remember Jesus said, I came to bring sight. So, you know, if you think about it, how a military individual is dressed, they have night vision. If you look at a full armor of military, they have night goggles where they can see at night. They have weapons, they are armed, they carry bulletproof vests and so forth. And it's the same thing in the physical realm as it is in the spiritual realm. A warrior anointing comes fully armed and dressed. Does everybody get it? And it's not dressed physically, it's dressed spiritually. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. So in other words, we must keep them activated. Activated. And it can't be activated if there's not consistency. You know, you could be driving down the road and uh, you can blow out a flat tire, right? You can blow out a tire. You can still drive on that car, but it ain't going to drive too well. eventually you'll end up having to replace the rim and everything. But you're not going to maintain that momentum that you did. 
Amen? That's how the enemy does. He likes to blow out one tire so that your momentum is not consistent now. Does everybody understand what I'm sharing? Eventually, he'll blow out the other tire, and you won't even know it's blown out. And then he attacks. Again, he's always trying to prevent momentum. Maintaining connection. So that's why he tries to interrupt things. How many of you know God doesn't interrupt himself? Amen? So he tries to interrupt things. So that momentum begins to hesitate. You know? You know that when one of your spark plugs is out, when you're driving down a road, it just don't run right. It's not smooth. Things ain't moving the way they should be. And you sense that. Hallelujah. All right. Therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, learned, and keep them activated and stirred up, lest we what? Drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward... How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? So who does he put the world to supposed to have control? Us. What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. What? To execute. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. And in that he put all subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we will see Jesus taking things in control. Amen? Does everybody understand? This is our identity. Uh, this is a reality and an understanding. It is a third level identity. Everyone say third level identity. Backed by the warrior anointing. See, this, this identity is backed by the warrior anointing. You know who you truly are. There is no hesitation. One who battles from the seat in heavenly places. Knowing God has the last say. No matter what's going on, it's my dad has the last say. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, and he's got the last say. And his last say will always be for me and not against me. See, there's confidence in him in the anointing. Psalm 89. The anointing that breaks all yokes of bondage. The warrior anointing. We can go on days with this. Psalm 89, verse 11. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them to borrow and harm and rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteous and justice are the foundation of your throne. Does everybody see that? Righteous and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and grace go before your face. So you and I are defenders of the throne of God under the warrior anointing. Why? Because we hold justice and righteousness as a foundation. That's the foundation of the throne. We are connected to the throne room of God under the warrior anointing. 
That's where it comes from. Is everybody okay? Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, and our king is the Holy One of Israel. Powerful. So we are defenders of the throne of God because we are defenders of righteousness and justice. Amen? Because that is the foundation of the throne of God. Under the anointing, the anointing is justice and righteousness. It's defenders of justice and righteousness. It's exposers of wickedness that come against justice and righteousness. That's why we're seeing so much going on right now in the world. There is such a shaking and a quaking and an exposing because a warrior anointing is exposing all unjustness, if there's a word of that, and unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Psalm 18. Hey, under the anointing, I can make any word up I want. <laughs> verse 31, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Psalm 18, verse 31. Warrior anointing. Let's speak of... For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? In other words, who is the anointing except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength. Through what? The anointing. Oh, yes. And makes my way perfect. Hello, what makes your way perfect? The anointing. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on the high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You also have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. Does everybody get this? This is what the warrior anointing does. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. I love vengeance. I love vengeance on evil. I don't have to do anything. I just watch it come. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. See, that anointing causes you to pursue your enemies. Spiritual. Somebody get it? You are attacking those things. You're going after those things until they're gone. Oh, yes. I have wounded them so that they cannot rise up. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save them. Even the Lord, but he did not answer them. How many know the Lord does not answer demons? Hello. Or fallen angels. They tried, but he wouldn't answer them. And then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt into the streets. See, acknowledging the Lord is the anointing of the a warrior's foundation, and he, he anoints our arms for strength. In other words, we are strong in worship. That anointing keeps us, strengthens us, keeps us perfect, teaches us to war, shields us, causes us to pursue our enemies and overtake them and remove them. And remove them. Listen, all your trials and tribulations expose your enemies. Again, in this because you no longer see according to the carnal way. You see what's influencing. Everything is about what's influencing, what's influencing, what's influencing, what's, what's influencing me, what's influencing this person, 
Why is this person acting that way? So you're able to see through the physical all the time into the spiritual. That doesn't mean you're going to walk up to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you got a demon. Hello. You may end up brawling in the physical. <laughs> But you got to use wisdom according to that. You are got to be led, you know. You not to go out and provoke things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's going to cause you to pursue your enemy. So things that you're going to go through is going to expose your enemy. When you know that your enemy is there provoking you, you pursue it until it's destroyed. You don't give up. Does everybody get it? So many people do one prayer. Okay, I got it. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to cast you out. I hope. No, you pursue it till it's gone. Till there's no more attachment to you. Till there's no more sense. There's no more thought. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. When it's gone, it has no connection. Other NATO will leave a seed. And then you kill the seeds that have been planted in you that it's left. Or they'll regrow. Proverbs 2. It's like Pac-Man. Wah, 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 wah. Gobbles it right up. You ain't getting away. <laughs> But we're packed with the power to pursue. Proverbs 2. It's just for you. Verse 1, let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments or commands within you. Hey, listen, when God gives a command, is it anointed? Yeah. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to what? Wisdom. Wisdom, which tells you what to do. And apply your heart to understanding, which tells you how to do it. Yes, if you cry out for discernment, that's a combination of wisdom and understanding, you'll have discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Mm. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. Praise God. So we're to maintain a pursuit to increase, enlarge, and infiltrate evil. And we're to take territory. And how are you going to do this? It's going to be backed by the warrior anointing that is connected to the eternal wisdom and knowledge and understanding, which is going to bring you discernment. Listen, we carry this warrior anointing, and it will always have fruits of reverence, honor, and respect to the Father. There's always a fear of the Lord there. There's reverence. It's respect to his, and, and, and respect to the advancements in the kingdom of Christ. We always will carry the fear of the Lord. The anointing always carries the fear of the Lord. You reverence God. If you're not in a place where you're reverencing him, then the anointing's not there. Because it brings the fear of the Lord. That's why it says work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Now when you think about it, he says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out, work out. In other words, build on the anointing. Build on the anointing. Build on the anointing. Build on the anointing. Does everybody get this? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians 4, verse 7.
But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power of the anointing may be of God and not us. How many of you know the enemy wants to always exchange the anointing of Christ for selfish, selfish, uh, self-righteousness and uh, your, your own strength and so forth? Yet we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Why? Because the anointing is overcoming all these. Persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us and life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. We are earthen vessels that carry the anointing. Amen? We are carriers of the warrior anointing. We are to acknowledge it and respect it. But we are also able to get connected to receive it. In other words, we believe, we receive, and we execute. 1 Corinthians 4. So you will be seeing more and more prophetic prophets coming out. There's more prophets coming up now and releasing prophetic words because they're turning the body. That's what God uses his prophets for is to turn the body according to the direction. So there's a release of more prophetic words and the prophets, true prophets that hold a position that are global prophets they are turning the body of Christ. They're in every country, nation, continent, and island globally, bringing unity and directing by what they're releasing. And everything that is happening right now, remember, God is releasing a warrior anointing. It is happening right now. That's why you're seeing so much conflict right now. That's why you're seeing separation. Listen, this is going to cause division. It's going to cause a great division. It's going to show you those who are on sand and those who are on the anointing in the body of Christ. But it's going to cause great division even globally. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be a lot of things happening. But listen, how many know God releases prosperity in the anointing? Remember I shared with you about the three world ones. The first one was to tear away and expose wickedness and evil. Amen? The second was to bring provision. Well, provision comes through the anointing. And the third one is to come and take us home. So we are already at the second world one. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 1. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants to the what? Servants to the what? To the anointing. Somebody get it? We are servants to the anointing. The anointing does not serve you. Amen. You serve the anointing. People try to get the anointing to serve them. It will grieve the spirit. And then what happens when the spirit steps back, guess who steps in? The familiar spirit. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ or servants of the anointing. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Let me tell you, when the anointing can come, how many of y'all know that you'll have hidden things that God has been holding specifically for you or to let people know? That's why a lot of the prophets are coming up now. A lot of the words from the prophets are being released. You can Google all over. They're all over the place. Why? Because they are releasing the mysteries of God under the warrior anointing. Is everybody Okay. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful, which would be consistent, wouldn't it? Amen. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. Why? Because he's an executor. Does everybody get it? See, Paul was under the warrior anointing. 
For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is always before him. 1 Corinthians 2. Then one more verse. We are servants to the anointing and the stewards of the truth released by the anointing. Those are called mysteries of God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the, the Holy Spirit or the anointing teaches. But which the Holy Spirit or the anointing teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. In other words, the anointing, remember I share with you, the honor and the anointing, God releases wisdom, understanding, discernment. So you'll be able to compare things. You'll be able to discern things quickly. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's why the world does not know what you're talking about. In fact, there's a lot of believers that don't know what you're talking about. Hello? They're more concerned in works. Amen? The anoint works does not build the anointing. But he who is spiritual judges all things. In other words, he who's under the warrior anointing judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Why? Because he allows the Lord to judge him. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the mind of the anointing. Snap. The anointing teaches with discernment, sensitivity, and a knowing. You know. I'm going to close at 1 John 2. Get ready. It's happening. And it's okay to be in Holy Ghost boot camp. Amen. Officers training school. Because the anointing will come. It's there. Now you got to step into it. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Everyone say, I'm stepping into it. If you step in the anointing, you know, you know what you're stepping into? Your destiny. There are, verse 24. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need, don't need anyone to teach you. But you are... But as for the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will what? You will abide in the anointing. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he's righteous and you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of God. Is everybody all cool? Everybody got it? Warrior anointing. It's here, it's now, and it's going to continue. Praise God. Father, we are honored. We are blessed. We thank you for your word. And Lord, the word that's been imparted in us today, and you know, come on, just lift your hands to heaven. Jesus. Jesus, let the anointing, that warrior anointing, descend upon each and every one and abide in each and every one. Break every yoke of bondage. Remove every veil. Unveil us that we can unmask the enemy under the anointing as a warrior for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.